Hear this again, dear hearts. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Bless now your word and this with thy people. In the name of the Holy Child, Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I want you to hear this because, as you know, I'm not the kind of preacher that seeks to tickle ears or uh, to impress men. I am very much glow uh, in the face of God, asking God to give me a word for your people, a necessary word, a needed word, an applicable word. Now, hear that word, applicable word, a word that you can actually apply to your life. I'm dealing with the subject matter of, hear this now, five things that could hinder God from moving in your behalf. Five things that could hinder God from moving in your behalf. I've said this, but I was repeating. I said that if there's anything in my life or your life that could possibly hinder God from moving in you and I behalf, we need to get rid of that immediately. I want nothing and nobody to hinder God from moving in my behalf. Can I get an amen up in here? And so, number one, it was disbelief. Number two was distrust. Number three was disobedience. Disobedience, which we completed on last Sunday and started in number four. Number three, disobedience. Number four was, and where we left off, impatience. Impatience. Some of us are hindering God from moving in our lives because we're simply impatient. We want it so bad that we hurry it along and make something go. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you know, we, we, are, we are prone to say what well, the Lord said. And I'm convinced in my experience, God ain't saying a lot of this. Help me, I pray. Yeah. I, 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 I know this is early, and I'm not going to walk you too much today because I got too much to accomplish, but tell somebody, stop lying on God. <laughs> Some of this, simply, God is just not saying. I'm sorry, but we get impatient. We get impatient. We want something so bad. We live in an instant society. We want it now. Several years ago, Instant coffee. You stop drinking percolated coffee because percolated coffee is different from instant coffee. Percolated, percolated coffee tastes a little better because it's a process. It takes a little time. Now, I understand some of you are instant, instant coffee drinkers and, and more power to you, but, but I like it when it perks a little bit. Before you drink it, you can smell it. It permeates the house. Get your juices to flow and wake you up in the morning. That instant stuff you pour it in there and you drink. Right, let's leave them leave it alone. Impatient. We want something for so bad. Latin in origin. Impatient or impatience. Latin in origin. Restless. Eager. Anxious to obtain. Anxious to obtain. Anxious to obtain. Lack of composure. You want something so bad that you lose in irrational thinking behind it. You cease to count up the cost. You just want it so bad. The Bible says for a man build a house, he should first sit down and count up the cost. Mm -hmm. Count up the cost. Impatient. Impatient. Lack of composure. I tell pastors, many times when you're building a house, young pastors want to be all of that so bad. They want to be marqueed so bad. They want the name to be Harold so bad that they immediately start going upward in their ministries. They want deacons. They want, they want, they want armor bearers with two members, armor bearers. Amen. I used to pastor a young lady. She was in Houston, Texas. She had four members. 
She had four members. They were having service. Ain't no wrong. The Bible says it's five, not the day of small beginnings. I understand that. She had four members, and it was in the living room of her mother's uh, house. And, 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 and that's okay. The spies not. Everybody got to start somewhere. I started in a YMCA, so I understand that. But, but you got four members, four, four, mem four members, and, and one of them is the armor barrel, one of them is, is the mother of the church, and one of them is, is the... <laughs> one of them is assistant pastor, and, other, and I said, is there any regular people? <laughs> is anybody just regular? <laughs> regular. Just my real quick. Say, just be regular sometimes. Just be regular. Just be regular. You want it so bad. You want to reach heights and depths so bad that you get in a hurry to the point that you get ahead of God. God is wanting to bless some of us and bring us into the next level. But we are so anxious to get there. If not careful, we would get ahead of God. Psalms, chapter number 27. Chapter number 27. Listen to Davi. 27. Mother Shaw, verse number 13. He said, listen to David. He said, uh, uh, dealing with some stuff. Dealing with some attacks of my enemy. Dealing with it to the point that I felt depleted and defeated. I want you to hear what he said. He said, but I realized this. He said, I had fainted. I would have fainted, amplified, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Look at me, church. Let me tell you why some people get in a hurry. Come on in, everybody. Let me tell you why some people get in a hurry. Some people get in a hurry because they don't truly believe they're going to see the hand of God. They start to disbelieve that God is going to really do what he said. And so what they do is try to help God out. Mm -hmm. By expediting everything. Speeding things up. Scripture. You know how it was when God promised Abraham and Sarah that I've made you the father of many nations. I'm going to give you a son to carry on the name. And, and it was, wasn't happening fast enough for them. Remember that? And, and Sarah and he got together and came up with a solution. And I know Sarah wasn't a sister. I don't know all the nationalities in scripture, but I do know Sarah wasn't a sister. Okay, you don't believe it? Check this out. And you tell me if she's a sister. Sarah goes into her husband, Abraham, and says, baby... Uh, I got my handmaiden here, Hagar. Tell you what you do. I bought y'all a room at the Notel. <laughs> y'all go down there and, and do what you need to do. Since I can't have a baby, you and her just have a baby. And it'll be kind of like our baby. Touch a woman said, no, she wasn't a sister. She wasn't a sister. She wasn't a sister. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. She wasn't a sister, but watch this. She has sister tendencies, though. Because, long story, after she had the baby, she was fine because Abraham was so, look at the baby, my baby, you know. Ishmael, which is wild man. Sometimes we get a hair gun and we get some wild hair. And she was fine. She was fine. Until he and Hagar was out in the garden playing with their child. And she looked at us and said, you ain't got to go home. But you got to get up out of here because I'm sick and tired of you and my man over here looking at each other, giving each other goo goo eyes. Wait, wait, wait. Come on, sisters. Come on, sister. A few minutes ago, y'all were fine. Now, come on here. Tell a woman real quick, say, girl, you better wait on him. You better wait on him. <laughs> 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 
He said, but I would have fainted. The only thing that gave me hope, the only thing that kept me praising God, the only thing that kept a resolve in my own heart and mind that I believed that God was going to do what he said. I'm trying to not preach, but I feel something down. Am I sanctified? So I believe that God is going to do what he said. I believe that God is going to deliver me. I believe that God is going to bring to pass the things that he's promised me. That's the thing that keep me ticking. That's the key thing that keep me coming to church. That's the thing that keep me sabaking him and todahing him and halahing him. That's the thing that wakes me up in the morning and tell myself he may not come when I wanted him to come, but I believe he's going to do that thing, do that thing. I need some people in here that yet believe that God is going to bring to pass what he promised you. I want you to touch anybody near you and tell them, I still believe that God is going to do what he said. I've been waiting a little while. I've been wrestling with it a little while. Every now and then, I'm troubled in my spirit. But don't let my troubling fool you. I still believe God. Don't let these tears deceive you. I still believe God. Don't let the frown on my face get you twisted. I still I believe now nah, I don't have enough believers. I need about a hundred people to slap another hundred people and say, I believe with everything that's in me, it's just a matter of time. Deb, would you charge up that area back there? I thank all of y'all for, for getting into the message right now because some of us are just sitting here idly and it says to God and to you that you don't believe it's going to happen. But I want the people standing up to tap somebody sitting down and say, I don't know why you're sitting down. Maybe, maybe you don't feel what I feel. I, I'm here today praising God because I yet believe that God is going to bring to pass in my life everything he said. Be seated. And uh, if I didn't believe that, Bree, I would have fainted. I would have lost sense of rationale and consciousness. I would have lost my bearings. I would have, I would have lost my bearings. Can I be blunt? I would have passed out. Let me help somebody, Catherine. See, because, you know, I know we have people in here who are, and I understand because I'm considered one of them, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Understand that. Understand that, that you live, breathe, uh, and bask in the glory of God. I understand that you, every day you wake, you awaken, you ascend in heaven, you know, that you got Jesus on the main line, you tell him what you want. I understand you got him so tied up, nobody else can get to him. I understand all of that. But some of us can testify to this fact. If it had not been the Lord... Anybody that can halfway identify what I'm saying, point your finger in somebody's face and say, I'm only here by the grace of God. I made it because of the grace of, grace of God. I still got my head twisted on right because of the grace of God. I would have did something real stupid if it wasn't for... Anybody indulge me and tell anybody, if it had not been the Lord... Speaking to my head, speaking to my mind, speaking to my spirit, speaking to my situations. I can't tell you all my testimony, but I thought some stuff that I should not have thought. I said some stuff that I should not have said, and the Lord granted me grace anyhow. Excuse me a minute. I'm going to thank God because I would have fainted. Shell, had I not believed need anybody in this room that thank God that all the hell that you went through you still believe get on your feet and shout for the belief no shout let all hell hear you praise God because you let believe tell anybody I still believe God I'm not ready I'm not ready be seated I'm not ready I'm not ready. I got a demon I got to whip here today. You're not going to leave here struggling with what you came with. 
When you leave here today, you won't be under the devil's feet. He's going to be under yours. I said, when you leave here today, you will not be under his thumb. He's going to be under yours. When you leave here today, he won't be speaking to you. You're going to be speaking to him. Who am I talking to right now? Hallelujah. Just open up your mouth and say, devil, you ain't got to go to hell. But you got to get away from me, away from my mind, away from my family, away from my children, away from... Ow! I would have fainted. I see you back then. I feel you too. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He concluded, Kimberly, by saying this. He said, so therefore, wait on him. Impatience. Wait on him. If you truly believe that God is going to hasten to perform the things he has so promised you, then wait on him. Don't just wait on him, but be of good courage. Be of good courage. So, well, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm dealing with, and you're telling me to be of good courage. Be of good courage. How can I submit that to you with ease? Be of good courage. You should be of good courage because he sent an assassin against you. Hell unleashed some demons. See, we don't know all the stuff you've had to endure. But I don't believe I'm the only one in here that have the testimony that hell unleashed some demons against you. Yeah. Be of good courage because everything God allowed, you survived it. Yeah. Regina, so if you survive that, James Cleveland put it like this. He said, I don't feel no ways tired. He said, I've come too far. From where I started from. He said, nobody told me that the road would be easy. He said, but I don't believe. I don't have no witnesses up in here. Anybody that don't that believes that he didn't bring you this far to leave you, shake a hand like you're about to shake it off and say, I don't believe that he brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe that he delivered my house through all that it's been through for it to go under. I don't believe that he's taken care of me all these years and all of a sudden he's going to stop. I don't believe... So would you do something and tell three people, tell them be of good courage, be of good courage, be of good courage, be of good courage. Now be seated. Be of good courage. And know that the Lord sent me to tell you, Jackie, that he's going to strengthen your heart. He's going to strengthen your heart. He's going to give you the strength to make it to the next level. He's going to give you strength to make steps toward the promise, the process, the prophesied place that he has so ordained. Last Sunday, I was upstairs after service, and someone ran upstairs and said, Dad, you need to run downstairs. I said, what's going on? They said, Mother Mary just fell in the parking lot. And I was... Uh, finishing, put my things on, and I was half naked. No, I'm not half naked. I was just, I was putting my stuff on. I'm just kidding. I'm being, I was, I was putting my stuff on, you know. I, you know, I, I really wasn't. I, yeah, come on, get a grip. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You know, I, I was putting my junk on, you know, you know, I was coming down, buttoned up, you know. And I ran outside, and uh, uh, Mother Mary was sitting in the car. And I said, I thought y'all said Mother Mary was, fell down and went over. And she said, uh, I said, you okay? She said, oh, I fell down. She said, but I'm all right. God sent me to tell somebody, you fell down. But he also to tell, want me to tell you, it's going to be all right.
You lost the job, but it's going to be all right. You didn't get the money to start your business, but it's going to be all right. That joker went off and left you for another woman, but everybody that truly believe that because you waited upon him, it's going to be all right. I want you to put in the atmosphere, say, devil, it's going to be all right. It's going to, it's going to. Would you encourage the person near you, Patricia, and tell them, God said, it's going to be all right. It's, it's, it's going to be a... Listen, some of y'all are not responding. And I really hate that because one of y'all can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 in flight. There's enough power in this room that if it's released right now, who know what God may do? I want you to tell three people, it's going to be all right. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going... All right, all right, all right. Go to the book of Lamentations. The book of Lamentations, chapter number three. The book of Lamentations. I, I, before, I, I know some of y'all probably don't even know what Lamentation is, so just look between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. It's in between there. I saw some of your faith. He said, Lamentations. This must really be God if you're going to give you a word out of Lamentations, you know. <laughs> They about a lamentation? You better sure enough receive this. People don't even read lamentations. I saw some of you. Where that is? Lamentations. You got that? You got it? Look at chapter number three. Some of these preachers still looking. We waiting on you, Carolyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elder porn, they still looking. You know. Look at chapter number three, if you're there. Morris, look at verse number 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Greg, I don't want you to go there, but just in case, I just need y'all to, just, just in case I go there, because I love this. The Lord is good unto them that wait on him. I'm going to say it again. The Lord is good to them that wait on him. Last time. The Lord is good to them that wait on him. Tell anybody, tell them, wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. No, no, no. I need everyone in the room to tell anybody, tell them, wait on him. Wait on him. He is worth the wait. I said, he is worth the wait. For the Lord is good to them that wait on him. If you're watching me in Korea or China or South Africa or the continent of Africa, the Lord is good. Germany. The Lord is good. I got word of all this this week and last week. People are watching us from around the world. The Lord is good to them that wait upon him. Now, now, I better stop that. I could be cussing. I don't even know. <laughs> Forgive me if I said anything that I should have been saying. I'm just being facetious. The Lord is good to them that wait upon him. <laughs> Y'all praying for me? Y'all praying for me? Don't write me, please. Don't write me. Don't write me. I'm just, I'm just having a little fun. You know, don't write me. To them that wait on him. Watch this. To the soul that seeketh him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait. I got to deal with that. That hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. That hope and quietly wait. And I'm help you now. This is important. This is strategically important because it could possibly hinder God from moving in your behalf. While you're waiting, stop the complaining. Yeah. 
Stop the complaining. If you believe God, stop the complaining. Stop the negativity. Stop the foolish chit-chat. Watch this. I want you to hear this. Not just the foolish chit-chat of others. The foolish chit-chat that's coming out of your own mouth. Mm -hmm. Many of us have adopted this philosophy to think that our problem is somebody else. And many times our problem can be us. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. <laughs> quietly wait. Now watch this. When I say quietly wait, I'm not necessarily talking about no verbals. Nothing coming out of your mouth. Nothing rolling off your tongue. I'm talking about quietness of spirit. Where well, you're resting in him. Where well, you're resting in him. You're not allowing idleness or idle chit chat or vain repetitions to come out of your mouth or out of your spirit or out of your heart. You silence that. We won't be thinking like that today. We won't be discussing that today, not to your neighbor, to you. Because nobody talk as loud to you than you. No one can jack you up better than you. Quiet. I, I want you to do something, exercise for me real quick, and this may sound a little silly to you, but I hope. I hope and pray that it blesses you like it blesses me sometime. I want you to say, shut up. Shut up. Y'all missed the whole dissertation. I want, you to, I want you to say, shut up. Shut up. Oh, I see now I got some people here that don't really grasp what I'm saying. Because you know sometimes you can talk to you. You can have a full conversation with you. Some of you go as far as to answer you. Uh, oh, yeah, you be talking to you. You know you said this last week, did. Look at the saints up in here that don't want to be real. You know how it is. Sometimes you can have a full-blown conversation with you. And you're telling you all kind of stuff. Uh, no, no. Take off your safe, sanctified hat for just a minute and put on your humanity costume. You know sometimes we can talk to ourselves. And we be telling ourselves all kinds of things. Things that you cannot testify about. Oh, yes, sir. Some of us go as far as to talk in our sleep. I mean, full-blown conversation with you. Even answering you. I thought about, uh, well, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, you know, I started to do that, but you know. Oh, you say what now? You think I should? <laughs> well, I thought about, you know, well, pray with me. Talking to you now, pray with me. <laughs> you telling yourself, let's touch and agree. Kyra walk in the room, elder now talking to herself, Mama, <laughs> you all right? <laughs> walk in the house, she go back to the garage, <laughs> call you on the cell phone. Mama, who's that in there with you? <laughs> Ain't nobody in here, me and Jesus. <laughs> Jesus telling you all that?
One more time, as loud as you can. Say, shut up! Shut up! If what you're saying is not aligning itself with God's word as a reference to my life, shut up. Look at that my time. Look at Hebrews, chapter number six. Sometimes, dear heart, you got to make sure that you are not your problem. While we're trying to blame the world, while you're waiting on God, wait on him quietly and make sure, watch this, you are governing what goes in and out of your mind and your spirit. Be bold enough. In my day, they called it holy boldness. Be bold enough to silence any negativity that may be trying to creep in your world, that may be trying to enter into your scotoma, the arena that you've set for yourself. Y'all pray for me, but I've made up my mind that I'm not going to have a bunch of negative people in my world. I thank God all them guys back there clapping. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with y'all. Tell somebody it's time for me to get rid of all the negativity. No, no. Tell them, even if they don't tell you back, because they might be the negative person, but tell them, I got to get rid of the negativity in my life. That even includes my tongue. I will... Be the head and not the tail. I will be above Sheila only and not beneath. I will be the lender and not the borrower. Can I get a loud amen in here? Amen. Hebrews chapter number 6, listen to this, verse number 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them. Watch this, that followers of them who came before us who through faith and patience, who through faith and patience inherited the promise. I want y'all to get that. Who through faith and patience inherited the promise. I want y'all to get this and don't forget this. God will make you and I a promise. And there are times, I want you to hear this, he will make you a promise, son. But he has to process you to it. He's promised to, to bless you, to enhance you. He's promised to bless you financially. But sometimes he has to process us to get there. He promised you a husband. But sometimes he had to process you to the husband. He don't want you to run this one off like you did the last one. I've shut down the whole women's department. He don't want to process you. So he got to put an old mother in your life that can teach you how to do something more than just pour milk on frosted flakes. Amen. He's got to take that wrenching out of your neck. He got to take some of that project out of you. I need the mothers praying for me right now because he needs to take some of that wrenching out of your neck. You know you know what I'm talking about when you're talking to a man and your neck extends about four feet away. <laughs> he got to put some patience in you and help you to understand that it can always be just your way. You argue over everything. 
he bit the cracker wrong. You ain't supposed to bite a cracker in the middle. You supposed to bite a cracker on the edge, in the corner. And y'all having a fight over how he bit the cracker. I, I dare you bite a cracker like that in my house. Touch the woman said, girl, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. Yeah. He's got to process you. He's got, he got to process you. He got to process, process you, dude. So, so you won't go in there and make the foolish mistake that this don't taste like my mama's food. This rice is crunchy. I need... <laughs> He's got to process you. He's got to process you and take that lazy spirit off you. She's going to work every day and you at home watching ESPN. I would to God I could stretch my neck all the way to that wall over there. He got to process you. He, he got to process you. Teach you how to give yourself to a man. Amen. You can't be having all these headaches. He's got to process you. I wish to God y'all would shut down. He got to process you. Not just lazy men, but lazy women. Here we go again. How much time I got left? I got about 12 minutes. He got to process you. Process you. He might give you some Red Bull. Here, drink this. He got to process you because you ain't ready. I despise it when people come to church and they're so spiritually sedated that they think you ain't supposed to talk about certain things that church like sex. I don't believe he talking about sex at church. You have got 10 kids and don't want to talk about sex? <laughs> I got you then. And I, I slapped you upside that big head. Pam! What you say now? I'm so sick and tired of that. Touch anybody and say, get for real, babe. Get for real. I'm going to go on to the next part because I see now I'm about to shut this, this church down. I'm just trying to help you. He's got to process you and get you ready for the blessing. Get you ready for it. I was reading a study the other day. They were talking about people that win the lottery. And they said, most of the people that win the lottery, within five years, they go bankrupt. Some of them have won well up into the hundreds of millions of dollars and lose it all. You know what they said? This is what they came back and said in their studies. They said a lot of them lose it because they had become so accustomed to being poor that they spent it all so they could go back to what they were comfortable with. He got to process you. Because once he bring me through it, I ain't going back. Can I get an amen back there, gentlemen? I dare you to tell anybody, when he bring me up out this hole, I'm not going back. I wish he would let me win the lottery. I, uh-oh. I need everybody in here that's refusing to go back from the pit that he bought you out of. I want you to tell somebody, say, if the Lord bless me, I would never go back to being poor. I would never go back. Because you got to understand something. Being poor is not just not having money. Being poor is a mindset. Because you can have a whole lot of money to share and still be poor. I want you to shake a hand real quick and say, once God deliver me, I will never go back. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I, 
I, I, I really appreciate y'all for coming to church today and helping me with my service because the members here don't seem to be with their pastor today. So will y'all help me? And, and gentlemen, just turn around and tell anybody behind you, tell them, when God bring me up out of this, I'll never go back. I'll never go back to jail. I, I'll never go back to prison. I'll never go back to drugs. I, I'll never go back to crack. I'll no, never go back to the streets. When God bring me up out the hole that I've been in, I will never go back. Anybody in here that's agreeing with those men back there, I want you to look at those men and say, men, don't go back. It ain't worth it. It ain't, it ain't worth it. When God bring you up out of that thing, don't you ever. Now I know everybody in here that's saying to hell, I'll never go back. I want you to get on your feet and say, God, when you bring me through it, say, I will never I wish I had a sanctified church. Hallelujah. Come here, Justin. Grab a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, when God bring me up out of this, I, I, I will never go Tell five people, don't ever go back. Don't ever go back. Don't ever. The Bible said, uh, forgetting those things which are behind uh, and reaching for those things which are before. Press uh, toward the mark uh, of the higher call that God is calling you to. Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I fire somebody, Brenda, and say, I will never go back. I got about eight minutes, and I need them. I got about eight minutes. Give me eight minutes. Give me eight minutes. Give me my eight minutes. I want seven, seven. He said, listen to what he said. He said, because when I made him the promise, he said, when I could swear by no other. He said, I swore by myself. I want you to do something. I'm going to close right here. Because I'm going to see now some of y'all ready to go and get your bite to eat. Beans, cornbread. I don't know what you're eating. Tell somebody and tell them. God told me to tell you, he swear he's going to bless you. So, I'm through. I'm through. I'm so disappointed that you made the mistake of sitting by the wrong person. But point your prophetic finger in somebody's face and say, neighbor, God sent me by you to tell you this. He told me to tell you, he swear, he's gonna bless you. <laughs> when he could swear by no other, he swore by his own name. What is his name? The name Jesus. He said, I swear I'm going to bless you. So when demons try to stop it, all you got to do is say my name. Say my name. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. I need somebody that seems to be hindered. That's the where God has taken. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. You ain't saying it. He says, say my name. I swear I'm going to bless you. Tell anybody on your row, as many people up and down your row, that God said he's going to bless you. And when trouble comes, all you got to do, Nessa, is say his name. Say his name. Somebody real quick, say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name, say his name. I can't hear you. I said, say his name, say his name. I can't hear you. Say, S no. Open your mouth, Ted. Say his name. Wilder, say his name. Vaughn, say his name. Everything that has breath, say his name. Adrian, stand on your feet, son. 
for the demons that tried to kill you, for the demons that won't, don't want to see you fulfill your purpose and your destiny. We got one thing to say. Say his name, say his name. Lift up your hands, son. Because what the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it for his good. I speak now to your anointing. Ow! And I command you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I command you to walk in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout right now. Lift your hands, son. Because as you lift them, God is going to lift you. As you lift them, God is going to lift you. As you raise them, God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm commissioning us to release a sound of praise in this place. Because God is about to destroy a yoke. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I will bind it in heaven. And if you loose it on earth, I will loose it in heaven. When you open up your mouth this time and release a praise out of your belly, God told me to tell you he's about to loose something. Yeah. You men that came to visit, lift up your hands. Uh, hallelujah. Because today, the Lord is going to set you free. Hallelujah. Just because you're not behind bars uh, don't mean you're, you're not free. Uh, so God said, whom the Son set free. He's free indeed. Uh, God brought you here today to free you. You will never, ever be bound again another day in your life. All the free people, one more time for five seconds, release, release, release a deafening sound out of your belly. Three, come on. Two, come on. Again, five more seconds. Come on, come on. God is going to free you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For whom the Son set free, he is free indeed. Give the Lord a rousing round of applause. Hallelujah. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Come on, come on. Some of you ain't clapping, trying to understand you. Come on. 
I could understand you responding like that if you were clapping for a man. I said, give God a hand. <laughs>